You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sais la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sais il volto dell'amore. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You 
Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Holy, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God 
God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. We come together in celebration and gratitude for the awareness of who we really are. Beloved offspring of an all-loving divine parent, knowing there is nothing we could do so bad that God would love us less, and nothing we could do so good that God would love us more. Mother, Father, God, we bask in the certainty of your gift of life, having accepted this gift. We choose to share this by extending love to a deeply hurting world, desperately in need of living at a higher level. So we set an intent not to hold back on any opportunity to love, and we call you forth, loving spirit, to lead us on a spiritual path that follows your will and your way. Thank you, God. Amen. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us. It's in every one of us. I just remembered it's like I've been sleeping for years. I'm not awake as I can be, but my seeing it's better. I can see through the tears. I've been realizing that I bought this ticket and watching only half of the show. There is scenery and lights and a cast of thousands who all know what I know. And it's good that it's so. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart. Open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us by and by. It's in every one of us by. I invite you to join me now as we pray the prayer of gratitude. The beautiful words of thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. And with the great joy of God in my heart, I give thanks for the fullness of life. My thoughts are uplifted and in tune with spirit. Good moves through me as a nourishing river of gladness and thanksgiving. 
and so for family, friends, and a place to call home, my gratitude comes from an overflowing heart. I'm assured of divine love and blessed with peace and guidance, health and abundance. Breathing deeply in awareness of God within and all around me, I settle into a consciousness, a conscious moment of appreciation. All that I could ever need may be found here in divine mind, just brimming, filled with divine ideas. Overflowing with gratitude, I open my mind and open my heart. And I say my own personal prayer in the silence. I live expectantly, gratefully and abundantly. I am present and fully aware of the bounty of blessings in my life. As I focus on all that is good and right, I exude gratitude. And so to any thought of lack I may have, I say, be present, be grateful in prayer. I am an overflowing well of gratitude. In a spirit of thanksgiving, I thrive for all that I have and all that I desire, for the good of my past and the good ahead. I am grateful. May my needs of today be fulfilled as I give thanks in advance. May I rejoice in possibilities, enriched and prospered, right now as I pray the, the prayer of peace, the prayer of love, the prayer of thanksgiving in my heart. Good or God is an ever flowing river of abundance. I flow in the river through my ups and downs, starts and stops of daily living. May I know that replenishment is natural and that all the good I desire is right where I am, right in my next breath. My good is assured as I rejoice in divine abundance. I bless the world with thoughts of unity and harmony from my inner wellspring of gratitude. I radiate the light of harmonizing, unifying love in every direction, encompassing every person and nation and every form of life. I am the thought, word, and action of divine love in this, this moment of prayer. As we bring our attention back to this moment. We leave knowing that our heart is filled with gratitude and love is being sent out to all of the world, to every person, to every nation. And for that, we say, thank you, God. And now let us join together as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How deeply you're connected to my soul. Hello there, friends. Hi, hi, hi. Martha Creek here. Wonderful to be with you. This is an interesting topic today for some because it deals with the necessity of doing what some traditions called our shadow work. Now, the bad news is shadow work is never complete. So check to see if you have a pulse. Mm -hmm. So if I have a pulse, then I've got some more deep inner work to do. If you have a pulse, you have some shadow left too. I referred to it when I spoke earlier this month about not um, being believing that we're going to be free of this shadow work, the good news is we can be freer of this shadow, freer of the shadow and the shadow work. So this is a term frequently used in various spiritual traditions of and in each faith tradition, I would say. And we'll occasionally see some people state that shadow work is about getting in touch with our trigger points, our core issues, uh, even the dark side of ourselves. Um, so it can start to sound like Darth Vader if we're not careful versus just looking at what it actually is and what it is not. So it's not about looking at our inner mass murderer. It's not about trying to turn ourselves into a pure being of light and positivity. Because if anything, that has more of a tendency to cause us to spiritually bypass or a total avoidance of actually looking at these aspects of ourselves and then burying them, suppress, depress, disown, deny that they're there, 
so not dealing with this, burying these negative emotions and thoughts and feelings, and then treating them as something to be avoided, like it's possible, versus it's not possible, they're going to come up. And um, I know I rich, mentioned Richard Rohr earlier in my talk too, that he encourages us in his writings to that where we're stresses both the challenge and the great gifts that comes from working with our shadow self. And that as we get closer to light, as we get closer to being light, as we get lighter, the more of our shadow we see. And this is can go like, oh, MG, like, are you kidding me? So thus, this, this truly holy people, Truly holy people are always humble people. Holy equals humble. Humility. Humility. Humble. It's one of my favorite words. It also be, means literally, and look this up to see if it's accurate. I have not looked it up in years, but when I did, humility means to be reduced to nothingness and it's like to nothingness of this shadow, like the the most humility, the most humble people are people that are lighter, that are freer, freer of this. And invariably, something's going to upset us. Have you noticed? And we have a strong emotional reaction that's out of proportion even at times. You may even say, where'd that come from? Like it was out of proportion. So this that's the time that our shadow has reared its head. Our shadow self has been exposed. So begin to watch then for your knee-jerk instinctual reactions, overreactions, or over-denials, which has been more problematic for me because I could pretend that I was at peace. I could pretend it wasn't bothering me. I could pretend I was calm while my guts were twisted and something inside of me was really stirring because I was in an over denial of just how much under the effects of this I, I was at times. So the reason that mature, more mature people, emotionally mature people, spiritually mature people can be so calm, uh, can be so peaceful, so accepting of self and others is that there's not as much left of the hidden parts, the hidden shadow self, the denied self, the depressed, suppressed, disowned parts. So the parts that we have disintegrated are more integrated now. So we're not as likely then to lose our peace and to have these knee-jerk instinctual reactions as we have met these with some understanding and dealt with it. So this is great news. Because um, it's a process. Practice makes progress. And in the process, there is progress. And I absolutely know that you are having progress because I know who you are out there in the world. And I'm having progress because I redevote and recommit myself to this kind of work daily, weekly, and monthly. And now for coming up on 30 some years, y'all, since I've been doing this, well, 50 some, I've been doing it to some degree or another, and 30 years of it as a chosen spiritual practice, a chosen spiritual path um, to face the reality that we are with personal baggage. I am with some personal baggage and that this shadow work then is about looking at care fronting, maybe not confronting that personal baggage, but care fronting that personal baggage and then working systematically to dismantle it, unpack it, put it away, throw away some of it and to throw out some of it entirely as it's met with some understanding. Now, this comes with some pain. This comes with challenge for sure. Um, it also comes with a need for um, some help at times, um, depending on how deep our triggers are and what the triggering cause in, causes in us and how much deep healing there can be 
for some that certainly vary on a spectrum from the deepest traumas, post-traumatic stress traumas, and how much we can handle this. So we the good news is we don't have to be traumatized in order to do this. We simply need to be human and bring some understanding to our baggage as we unpack it. And every single body, every single human, everybody with a pulse has some of this to do. So personal development is essential in all the instances and in all the areas of our lives. Spiritual development is necessary for this. And hopefully we can do it with less shame, less blame, less self-hate, less remorse. So it's about taking responsibility of our part, dealing with our issues of that, that what has been disowned, disintegrated. And for me in the Course of Miracles says it as it's not a question if, of if you'll do this or not. It's just a matter of when. And, and for me, like how loud will it have to get or how much does a rug have to be um, pulled out from under, under me before I'm actually going to face this. So whether um, whatever level of um, degree or grade level of spiritual experience we have, it's, it's not even remotely relevant when we're dealing with this because whatever's left is left. So, and just because we have a degree, just because we've done yoga for 30 years, just because we're a priest or um, got degrees or whatever, nobody is exempt from needing to do this kind of work. And if anything, sometimes the further you go spiritually, the more of it you need to do because we're whatever's not unpacked, whatever's not been care fronted, cared for, met with some understanding and in our humanness, then it can, it can feel like we're getting dragged and screamed into doing it sometimes. So when you think it's painful on your own, um, enroll some kind of help, um, somebody that can sit with you, witness you, um, coach, counsel, spiritual direct, anything you, when you feel like you're in the deep end in order to get you to a state you need to be in to be uh, feel more balanced in it, more capable, more equipped. And I know in my own case, when I don't deal with it, it's, it's how I feel uh, like something has really been, I've been shoved into the deep end or people will say, oh, I got hit by a spiritual two by four, for example. So I'm encouraging myself as I say this today and encouraging you as I say this today. It's like, let's I, I don't recommend that route. Let's do the thing now, 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 now. Let's continue to do our inner work now and now and now and on our own and with support when needed before we get the shoved into the deep end or the spiritual two by four. That, that is cause for our awakening, that is necessary for our salvation. And if you're already in a state of feeling like you've been dragged in the deep end or you've had a spiritual two before, please do yourself a favor and don't fight it. Do the work. And I asked somebody 30 years ago, um, how, when was enough of this enough? And her very wise answer to me was, Sweetheart, if you've got a pulse, your work is not done. So do the work, keep doing the work, and keep on doing the work. And all the way to the grave, there's something that for us to look at, something for us to bring a different level of healing to. So um, shadow work is ongoing process. It does not ever stop. I regret to <laughs> say to you and some and even to hear it myself, I'm accepting of it in this moment. I'm accepting that it is ongoing process. It does not stop. And that being in touch with ourselves, self-realization, self-awareness is crucial, critical here. Working on our so-called issues is also super critical and it is it. it may not get easier. I can tell you from direct experience, my own and witnessing the very courageous, brave souls that I get to work with on a daily, weekly, and now decades basis is even though it's not easy and doesn't get any easier at times, it is super, super 
rewarding. It is super, super freeing. It is super, super liberating. And even while it may not get easier, things in our life do get easier. The way we are with life does get easier. And this is then its own efficacy in that even though the challenges are still there, the way we relate to the challenges is very, very different, including and especially the relationship with ourselves, the relationship with myself, which is the one soul in the world that I actually have any responsibility for my own soul's evolution, my own soul's progression, and um, my commitment not to take my issues out on others and to do anything that would erode the very precious relationships that I have with such good people. So I want to do my own work. And I want to take responsibility for anything that I've got disintegrated, unhealed, uncared for, uncarefronted in me. And to take responsibility in looking at those, dealing with those, and integrating all the aspects of myself. And I want to do it um, without losing good people in my life or eroding the very precious relationships I have. And we don't always get second chances. So no time like now to look at this work, to do this work, and to recommit to doing it. And to think about, I've got a worksheet that I've used over the years in workshops of where we look at self-differentiated qualities and undifferentiated qualities, which includes blaming, shaming, nit picking, fault finding, slow to recover, sensitive, covert, thrives in the dark. <laughs> These things that we often deny about ourselves versus looking to see not am I those things? Where am I those things? When am I those things? What causes me to do those things? And then through that self-reflection, contemplation, self-awareness, self-realization, and the shadow being brought into the light, so to speak, I have less to be afraid of that it's going to pop up or rear its ugly head because I've already looked at its in the face. I've already looked at its um, dark side, so to speak. And Greg Braden, if you remember his writings from years ago, he's still at it, by the way. And I remember one specific book, I don't recall the title, but he spoke about being this, this dealing with this darker side of ourselves. And he took himself out on a quest to live in the forest, to go out in the woods alone and to do some of this work. And he was very afraid out there. And he kept seeing these images of monsters in the campfire and in the woods and that, and, he, he could see from his rational mind that they were images. So his rational mind knew they can't harm him, but they were still appearing as monsters, as creatures. So he was still in a fear response to them. And in his devotion, in his commitment to meet these images, these aspects of himself differently, newly, he realized when he sat with them and didn't turn away from them, didn't run from them, didn't try to control and manipulate and shut them down, that 100% of the time when he stayed with those images, he saw that it was his own face. They weren't creatures at all. They weren't monsters at all. And that all of these faces, images, was an aspect of himself that he hadn't yet met with understanding, with open-heartedness, with power, like our 12 powers in unity, with faith, with imagination. How would I be if I sat with this? 
with understanding, with will. Like I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do this harder work, even when it's very, very scary. With power, with faith, with love, with renunciation, with a letting go. The power of life, the ability to move through times like this and to do it with active in our active in our powers um, and less afraid of what could happen from this so some of you may have that 12 powers book that i'm respeaking that i'm speaking of that was written by charles fillmore the founder of unity so get a sense as we go into this now a little further what how you may be active in your power of faith. Face any part of yourself. Any part that's been disintegrated, disowned, denied with faith, an act, more active power of faith. That I'm going to know that I'm whole and perfect and complete. That the divinity of me, the eternal infinite part of me is the part of me that is real. So I'm going to use faith to move me in that direction and not be as afraid of facing these disowned parts. So active in my power of faith, a love of self, a love of God, a love of the divine, a love of what created me, the love of freedom, the love of liberation, the love of the truth, the love of self-realization, the love of self-awareness, active in that love, the wisdom to know what is true, the wisdom to know what I can change and what I can't. The wisdom to know I've got to live whole and complete and liberated, free, that I cannot deny these parts of myself. So the wisdom to do the work itself, the wisdom to make a very powerful choice and not to continue doing it the way I've done it up until now. The power of understanding. I understand these parts. I understand where I was hurt. I understand where I was afraid. I understand how these parts got disowned. I understand how I could have felt trauma in certain situations and in instances in my life and circumstances. The, so I'm bringing understanding to those wounded parts. I'm going back for all of those parts through the power of imagination then to say, imagine how I would live if I was free of the shadow, if I was free of this part that's been disowned. So going toward what is more interesting to me, going toward what is truer for me through the power of my imagination, the, 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 the power of power itself, that I've got a power in me that is not of me, that comes from something higher than me, a power that comes from creative force, infinite, eternal, that's, that's, not, um, ex, that's an, an inexhaustible power, not force, power itself. And then the power of strength, the strength to do it, the strength to discipline, the strength to keep my spiritual practice cared for, the, the strength to look in these scary places, the strength to pull back, roll, roll over the log and see what worms and creepy crawlers are under it, to open the closet, empty the junk drawers, get in there and see the strength and the discipline to do that. Will and willpower. I have the will to do this, a willingness to do this a determination through the power of my will to do this, a zeal for it, a zeal for it, like some excitement that says I will do this, that there's real payoff in doing this and that my, um, I don't, I, I don't want to live as anxious and afraid anymore. So I'm, I'm remembering my why to do this, a zeal for the outcome of this. And then some order, the power of order, whether it's through um, journaling, writing, contemplation, reflection, prayer, um, letting go, uh, allowing for feelings, order, what order will I could I bring to this that, that says the systematic meeting of this with some order of it can absolutely be transformational. The power of life itself, the renewing power of life itself, the renewing power of the mind itself to renew my mind, to change the way I'm looking at something, to change the way that I have processed this and to be willing to process it maybe for the first time in my life. And then the power of elimination or renunciation, the power 
of letting it be, the power of letting it go. And these are represented by the 12 apostles. So if you want more information about the 12 powers, Unity's 12 powers is noted and denoted by Charles Fillmore. You can look them up in that book or dust off your 12 powers book that may be on some of your shelves and re re review them there. So Teresa of St. Teresa said that the mansion of true self-knowledge was the necessary first mansion on any spiritual journey. True self-knowledge, self-knowing is the necessary first mansion on the spiritual journey. Once we have faced our own hidden or denied self, there's just not that much to be anxious about anymore. There's less and less fear of being exposed, of exposure. And we're no longer afraid to be seen by ourselves or others. The game we've played, the, some of the games we've played are over. We're free and freer. We're finally are who we actually are and can be who we are, who we actually are without disguise, without disguise, without false face, without pretense, and certainly with less fear. So I affirm and know for you and with you and for myself as I speak these words in closing, I know who you are. I know what you are. I know how you serve. You are here, you are here, you are here. I know who you are and I know whose you are. Namaste. All blessings, friends. MarthaCreek.com to contact me. I was searching, I was looking for meaning I was wondering, desperately trying only to see I have nothing missing Who said, who said I have to find who I am Who said, who said that I am lost to begin I'd always be starving for more affection The wrong attention only to feel like I am nothing Who said, who said I have to find who I am Who said, who said that I am lost to begin
We are grateful for this beautiful song by Fearless Soul. And thank you, Nancy Ingalls, for your wonderful singing this morning. Reverend Martha, a great message. We are pleased that each of you could join us for today's service, and we invite you now to join in our prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. We ask your support of Spiritual Life Center with a donation to this ministry. There are at least four ways to do so. The first is online through our secure website, www.slctroy.com forward slash give. A second way is to mail a check to Spiritual Life Center, 41340 Fox Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. A third is to call my cell, 248-925-6214. Speak directly with me and provide credit card information for a one-time charge. A fourth way is to go to the email you received on Friday, and in there you'll see in a couple places, donate now or donate online, and you can just follow the instructions and it will be apparent how to proceed. We welcome anyone who might be joining us for one of your first times and we invite you to join our email list by visiting our website www.slctroy.com and in the upper right corner you'll see join email list. If you will just click on that, insert your name and email address, we will see that you receive each Friday morning an email that provides the link to the upcoming Sunday service as well as a link to any upcoming classes. If you have a prayer request, we invite you to send these to ronaldfscott at gmail.com and we will forward these to the prayer team of more than 30 powerful praying members of the church. And you would be amazed at some of the incredible outcomes we're, we're experiencing. You may also call Silent Unity on your own at any time and pray directly with a prayer chaplain at Unity Village. Their number is 1 800. Now pray. Next Sunday, my message will be on the many ways we can experience God. We expect you'll be able to identify with a number of these, but there may be some surprises for you too. Reverend Martha concludes her three-week class this Tuesday, July 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the five signs of life and how to use them. You are welcome to join in the class live by using the link that was in the Friday email. This class is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it on YouTube later. Our fabulous SLC picnic was yesterday at the home of Lyle and Denise Tyler. It was a wonderful time for all of us, and we are so grateful to them for hosting it. Please be sure to circle your calendar for our next gathering for a picnic in Troy at the Firefighters Park on Saturday, September 16th. Immediately following the end of today's service, everyone is invited to join us on Zoom for a time of social connection. The link was in your Friday email. But first, let's join together in our peace song and benediction. God bless.
was meant to be with God as creator, family all are Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my joyous vow To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And now as you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Go your way rejoicing, all is truly well.